Hey everyone, this is Ed Brzee with my Boomer Tech colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. I'll let them each introduce themselves. I'm Jill. Uh, it's good to be here on Zoom and talking to fellow Boomers and seniors. And uh, this is Chris, and I am looking forward to sharing a couple apps with you. And that's what today is all about. This is called Appy Wednesday, and we're going to each share <laughs> we're going to each share a couple apps that we really like and we think that you might be interested in too. Just quickly, Boomer Tech Adventures uh, works with baby boomers who are navigating their digital environment, and we provide expert guidance and personalized resources to develop their competence and confidence using Apple devices. We're on Zoom, we're using Zoom today to try out some uh, screen sharing and show you several things. And if I remember correctly, Jill's gonna start out with a couple of her favorite apps. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, actually, I'm gonna share the two apps that I've probably used the most uh, during uh, this quarantine period. And one of them I'm pretty sure is gonna be familiar to a lot of people, but it's always good to remember what's out there. So the first one I'm gonna share is the Kindle app. I'm on my iPad. Uh, let me share my screen. I'll just take a second. Three, two, one. All right. So, my Kindle app, uh, I have hidden away in my books folder. And there you go, I love the Kindle uh, icon with the, the kid reading against the starry night. And when I open it, up pops the book that I am currently reading. But if I press in the middle, uh, I get some options. And uh, you see down at the bottom, I'm on page 66 of 374. I haven't read very much of this book. Uh, up on the upper right hand corner, I've got uh, some A's. Well, let's tap that. Well, you see, I can change the size of the font, which is really good. And I'm evidently using Bookerly, but I could change it to Baskerville. That's kind of cool. Layout, what does that do? Oh, I can do a different background color. Oh, how about that? Um, I can do spacing, alignment, lots of options. And down at the bottom, I have brightness. Notice as I use that slider that the backlighting gets uh, dimmer. I have it up pretty high because of my old eyes. I know it takes more. Um, battery, but that's the way it goes. I'm going to give it a nice cream background. Okay, so I'm going to tap out of that. I'm going to tap in the middle again. And you see, I can, um, I have the choice to the right of the uh, letters. I can uh, create notes, Let me get out of that. I can, can share with people uh, what I'm reading. Can't share the book, but I could share uh, that I'm reading this particular book and I can bookmark it. Over here on towards the left, I can do a search for a word or a phrase. So if this were a textbook and I was looking for some specific um, time frame or a person's name, I could search. I could do it in this book too, but I was thinking that'd be really helpful in a textbook. The three parallel lines gives me a, um, a menu of choices, and you can see what those are. And this downward facing arrow is what takes me to my library. And uh, you can see that I've been reading uh, Charles Todd. It's a favorite author. It's actually a mother-son um, combo. And, uh, the books are set right after World War I in uh, England, and it really gives an eye-opening view of what life was for 
the people in England after coming through the Great War. And you can see the other things in my library. And then, of course, they're always willing to sell me some additional books based on what I've already read. But I can go to my library and I have the option to sort it. I'm up here on the upper right hand. I can uh, put it in a grid, a list, or by collections. I don't have it set into uh, collections. Uh, I can sort by recent, uh, by the title, alphabetical, the author, or the publication date, which is kind of interesting. Actually, I have it set at author. Uh, I can, I wonder what this more, three parallel lines of three dots always means more options. And here you see there are some other suggestions of what I can do related to reading. Uh, I can join the Goodreads community. I can look at reading insights. So it's really uh, lots of options. Let me go back to the library. And then if I just want to go back to my book, I just, uh, touch the little um, thumbnail of the book to, um, cover, and there I am, and there you can see my bookmark. So I have spent a lot of time with Kindle uh, these past few weeks because my little local library is closed. Now, yeah, there. the second thing I want to show you, the second app, is in my entertainment folder. And you see, I have a bunch of apps. And everybody knows about Netflix. But I wonder how many of you know about Acorn TV. Acorn TV is uh, British. And it has a lot of British, Australian, and New Zealand uh, movies and TV shows and documentaries. So I'm going to click there. And uh, you can see that uh, comes up with some of that are the most popular. Uh, the one I just finished watching was Dead Water Fell. And it, it was a mystery, uh, kind of a dark mystery, but it kept my attention. Um, they always come up with, whoops, we have lost. OK. We lost it because I was doing too much. So let's go back. Anyway, Acorn TV, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. Um, it's a subscription. I think it's about 7 or $8 a month. It has British TV shows. It has British movies. As I said, New Zealand and Australia also has wonderful documentaries. Uh, and I got rid of cable. And so it's one of my favorite go-to streaming services. So that's, those are two of my favorite apps on my iPad. Jill, if I could just quickly um, talk about that too. Uh, I apps, Acorn TV is fantastic. I love, we've watched several series. Um, I recommend 800 Words, which, is a, which was a very short series, unfortunately. And then there was another one with some of the same people, but a different show called Pack to the Rafters. Which was oh, really I haven't good read. Too. I haven't but, seen that one. I'm going to write that down. Packed yeah. to the rafters. <laughs> and and what okay. was the the Australian Downton Abbey was called of something like um, a place uh, home. a place to a place call, call home a place called home. Yeah. Like, yeah. That yeah that I I binge watched that last winter. <laughs> ah, it's, <laughs> when I, the snow was flying. Yeah, Acorn TV I, is great. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Do you want to go ahead? Your two apps. Sure. Apps? All right. So I'm going to, uh, let's see if I can do a little uh, screen sharing here. And there we go. All right. So do I have a thumbs up? You can see my screen? We can see your screen. Got it. All right. So um, the two apps that I that I use uh, quite often, um, interestingly enough, um, there's something that's similar to both of them and something that's different about each of them. Uh, the thing that's similar is that they are both social networking apps. 
meaning that when you use them, uh, the purpose is really to connect with other people um, remotely, which is when you kind of think about it during this time of COVID um, is, is kind of a nice thing. Uh, the thing that's different about them is one of them um, you basically use when you're sedentary, you're sitting around um, and you're not at least physically active. And the other one is you're definitely physically active. I'll start with the uh, sedentary one first, and that's Words with Friends. And that's that app that has, it's yellow and it has a, a W on it. And you'll also see there's a, see the number four? And without having to open that, it tells me that there are four games uh, that are in progress uh, where it's my move. So even without going into it, it's kind of beckoning me in to, uh, to play. So I'll tap on that. And uh, right away, you'll see this, um, this screen that comes up. And what's kind of fun is that as you may and more often, you actually will get these automatic rewards, um, these mystery boxes. And so if I tap on that, I get to claim my rewards. And I'll talk a little bit about what those, what those mean in a minute. But let's, um, there we go. So um, what's come up here is these are, these are the four games uh, with friends that, um, that were showing up on my, on my home screen. Uh, one of them is with my good friend, Dennis. And um, if I tap on that, see, it tells me it's my move, so I'll tap on that. And um, we have a game going on. Um, it shows the score at the top. And um, I, won't make, I won't try to make the move right now, but you can, um, you can kind of move these guys around like that. And then it gives you... Uh, the number of points that you got. So this was five points, which is not very impressive. But what's kind of fun is that you'll see there's a green kind of lightning bolt there, or, or it's a green dot with lightning bolt. If I tap on that after I play a word, it comes up with kind of this histogram, which tells me how competitive the word is and so this is kind of telling me that this is not a very competitive word that I can do better so that's kind of fun is it um, it can kind of challenge you as you're playing it so um, anyway so as soon as I would play that I would just kind of hit play and uh, and then I would be able to move on to another game so here's a, a good friend, Patty Kinney, kind of same thing. Um, so the, the fun thing here, I said it was a social app. And if you look up here in the upper right-hand corner, there's a, um, there's a dialogue cloud, you know, just like in the comics. And if I tap on that, and I'll just do this quickly, what happens is I can actually have a running conversation with the person that I'm having a game with. And so Patty and I are good middle school friends and there's a conversation that we've been having um, about other things. Uh, yeah, we're talking about my cookbook here. But so I could just kind of type a message in there. I won't right now because I'm not focusing on that. But that's kind of the words with friends uh, kind of thing. The other thing you can do is I can tap on on the lower right hand corner. See where it says friends. If I tap on that, that will show me other people that are playing online that are friends of mine and 
the way you kind of get these friends is the app actually will ask permission, which you don't have to grant, to locate your friends like on social media. So like Facebook friends. And the app will actually go out onto my Facebook and find other people that um, I socialize with online. So here, Joe D is a former student of mine. And if I wanted to, I could challenge her to a game, but I won't do that right now because I have enough games going on. But um, so, and these are other people and it'll actually tell you who's actively playing. So if I want to, you know, challenge someone, I might want to challenge someone who's already, you know, actively engaged in, in playing a game. I know every once in a while, Jill Spencer will, uh, will show up and <laughs> show me how to, how to play this game. No, I always lose. <laughs> there we go. So that's, that's words with friends. So that, you know, you can do, um, you know, while you're waiting in line. <laughs> to get into the grocery store because everyone can't just walk in anymore. But it's something that, that's kind of fun. So the second one that I mentioned is social networking, but it's active and it's called Strava. And that's down here on the lower right hand corner. And this is, I guess some people might call it a, a workout app, but it's more of an activity app and when i tapped on that you'll notice right here there's um, these choices for the different types of activities that you can keep track of for yourself so here's one bicycling which is the one that i do most often but here's hiking the next icon over to the right and then there's also swimming and um I'm not sure whether I would take my phone swimming. Maybe that's, <laughs> you put it in a plastic bag or perhaps if you have a, have a, a watch, an active watch, you might be able to uh, use that for swimming. So what's kind of fun about this is that you can set it so it keeps track of the different things that you do. So for example, right below the activities, you can see it says this week. And um, earlier this week, I, I did a bicycle ride, and it tells you how far, I, how far I rode, which is why I'm not riding today, because I went too many miles and I'm really tired. Um, this will also tell you, um, in total for this month, um, how many miles I've gone, so 126 miles total um, if I tap on these activities it will actually come up with the individual activities so this month I've done five activities there's my 126 miles um, a couple days ago I went to Reed State Park tells me the distance it also tells me the distance that I went uphill and that that always <laughs> makes me really tired because uh, according to this, I've, I climbed 2,274 feet. Um, and it tells me that it took me three hours and 41 minutes to do that. Um, and it will also give you um, other statistics as well. Uh, let's see. And there's the map, which is kind of fun. And you can, um, you can make notes. You can do photographs. I think you saw those. And here's the statistics. You can do an analysis of each of your rides. It tells you how many calories. If you're a calorie counter, that's too much math for me. Um, and if I tap the analysis, it'll actually give me a, um, a graph. And you can kind of see there were some pretty steep hills and some really steep downhills. And if you kind of think about it, if you go, you can see that for a lot of this, I, I, I went out 
and then I came back along the same route as you can see from the left side to the right side they're they're kind of the same um, here's the speed which kind of coincides with the uphills and downhills there were some parts that were a little scary I went 37 miles an hour down down a couple hills and that was that was the fastest and then you get some kind of some heart rates and things like that. So I mentioned that it was a, a, a social, um, a, a social app. And so let's see if I can find, let's see, here we go. So this was me, but if I hit following, I can choose to follow people that have been in, that, that have invited me to follow them. I can't stalk people, but um, what I can do is I can um, follow other people that are doing activities. And so here's, um, he's not a friend of mine, but I do know him and he knows me. And this is uh, Ben Williamson. And you may or may not recognize him as he's the, uh, photography editor for Down East Magazine. So he's very good at, uh, at taking photographs. But here's uh, yesterday, yes, yesterday afternoon, he took a hike up to Mount Maguntacook and took some pictures. And um, here's another friend of mine. This is a high school buddy who made a note he got lost on a windy day. Obviously, he found his way home, which was good. And so I can just kind of go down and see what my friends are doing. This, uh, Jill, you'll recognize Ulf. Oh, yes. Yep. And, um, and so I'm able to keep in touch with him, and we kind of compare our rides from time to time. Um, I can send him a note. I could give him a thumbs up, which is kind of nice, which is, you know, kind of like the like. So those are those. That's two apps that I use pretty pretty regularly. One when I'm lying around, and the other when I'm uh, doing other things. Um, so what I'll do is I will stop this broadcast. All right. Did that work? Yep. Very well. You're back. All right. We're back. Thirty-seven miles an hour downhill on a bike. Wow! I bet you don't let Joan see that. Okay, I'll finish up with my two favorite apps. Um, I am screen sharing. Are you seeing this, Jill and Chris? Yes. yes. Okay. I'd like to talk about, uh, the first app that I'd like to talk about is something called Loom, L-O-O-M, not to be confused with Zoom, which many of us are spending a lot of time on, like Chris and Jill and I right now. Loom is a, a very simple way to make instructional videos. And I'm gonna show you how that works. I'm gonna open Loom. It's, it's a free app, um, and like many other apps, um, you can have the free ba basic version or you can actually pay for it. Um, but it's very easy to use, and I'm getting more and more requests to do um, simple, well, to, to answer questions about whether it's getting on Zoom or doing something with somebody's iPhone or Mac, and I've got lots. Jill and Chris and I do this for a living, but we also do this for a lot of friends. And I found, or we found that uh, Loom is a, is a great little instructional tool. So you can see the, the Loom um, box that came up. And if you look in, down in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see me in a little circle talking because we've got that, we've got it on camera. There are several different settings and I'll show, uh, the first one is screen and camera. So 
if I wanted to do an instruction, a short instructional video of, and this is our sh shameless promotion of Boomer Tech Adventures, this is our website, but if I wanted to tell someone about that and wanted to um, kind of talk them through how it works and where things were, I could use Loom to make an instructional video. And in this first part, you can see me and the screen, screen as I'm explaining one of Jill Spencer's very good um, uh, blog posts about uh, technology to the rescue, making COVID-19 sequestering bearable. Great, uh, great uh, blog post. And then another one, if I was talking about this one, this one is about Zoom, and the next one is about FaceTime. And I could do that, and I could, um, I could make this short uh, instructional video. So you've got me talking down here if you need to see me. I could, the next setting is just the screen only. And then the next one actually didn't work very well. That should, I'm not sure why that's not working. That, that's camera only, and that should have me on, on the full one. I would use the screen only or the screen and camera. And it's very simple. Um, it connects to your, uh, your camera on, on your computer or your iPhone, and um, it connects to your built-in microphone or a plug-in that you might have. And literally you hit start recording and it's very simple. Um, I, I keep them relatively short, but it works very well. And then when you get done, um, you can see a whole list of your I think this will come up. You can see a list of all the videos that you've done. And here are several that I've done. So it's, it's very simple. Um, you don't do a lot of editing with these, but this is something if you've got um, an older set of parents or some relatives or friends that need some help with a simple instructional video, I really recommend uh, something called Loom. So that's the first one. The second one, um, hold on just a second. I'm going to show you something on my I'm mirroring now my my iPhone. Um, interestingly enough, Jill demonstrated on her iPad. Chris demonstrated on his iPhone, and I use uh, my my device of choice most of the time is my is my laptop. <laughs> I use my iPhone and I have an iPad, but I really like my laptop. I guess it's a large screen, Jill, as you mentioned too. But this is another one uh, that my second app is called uh, Cloud Library. I'm gonna just open it up. And very simply, it's just a way to connect um, virtually you to your own local library or whatever library that that you uh, work with and you can see it does a great job and i'm going to hit my books now this is really embarrassing because jill just showed you all the books that she's reading on the kindle app and i've got one single book here that well you uh, can only check out a couple of books at a time. Oh, anyway. actually, that's right. Thank you, Jill. You saved me. <laughs> uh, three. <laughs> and actually, I've got a lot, a number of books. I've been spending more money recently because one thing I do, I have noticed that is that I think a lot of people are doing a lot of reading during this time of self-isolating and quarantine. And I, I don't think a lot of the, a lot of the books seem to be out at the library. Um, even virtually, so they only have a certain number of copies. But I'm just looking at the bottom of the, the tabs at the bottom. You can see I was on the home tab, and then my books that I currently have up at the top, you can see uh, current. Um, you, we can take a look at my history, um, holds and saved. It's taking a while to connect on those. Um, the other thing that I really like about um, about Cloud Library is that you can set this for certain kinds of books. 
and preferences and interests. And, and one of the things that's really helpful online is that you can also um, set it for books that are actually available so you don't have to scr scroll through screen after screen trying to find books and then you check, then you click on it and find out that it's gone. Um, so this, uh, we're in the search mode right now. And again, this is in Orono, Maine, up near Bangor, if you're from a ways away. And it's just showing me different categories of, of books um, that I have access to. Uh, and then the last one across the bottom is simply the account. And um, that is called Cloud Library. And you just have to connect it with your library card and library number and that sort of thing for your local library. And it's a great way to get free books. Jill, question for you. Do you, yes. are you, you read primarily on your iPad? Um, not necessarily. It's probably 50-50 now when the library is open. Right. Or okay. uh, I have bought some books recently, so I, it's 50-50. You know, sometimes I just like to curl up with my iPad and other times I curl up with a real live book. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you ever read on your iPhone? No. Too small? Too small. Yeah, Chris, how about I mean, you? Whoops, sorry, go um, ahead. I, I read, I listen mostly to, uh, to books and I actually will read on my, on my iPhone. Okay, yeah, because of the three of us, you're the one that uses your iPhone probably more than the other two of us, I would say, for just about everything. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I think so. I think yeah, so. I, I think, think so. so. And Julie uses her iPad. I love my computer. And, um, yeah. But Chris mentioned audio, and there are audio books here, too. Uh, we were, my wife and I have been listening to the new, uh, well, relatively new um, Michelle Obama book. So, anyway, well, that's it. So, Loom, I did Loom. Um, to make short instructional videos and then cloud library to connect. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Jill and Chris, any final words on, on apps? Um, I don't think so. Those, like I said, those are the two that if you were to check my screen time, I've used the most. Uh, there are plenty of others. I mean, I play around with some photography ones, but uh, those two, probably the most when I'm just relaxing. Great, great. So this is going to be, uh, this video will be on our Facebook page, obviously, and we'll give you a prompt. We'd like to know some apps that you're currently using that are your favorites, and you can put them right in the, right down below in, in Facebook. Anything else, crew? Thanks for stopping Not by, and yeah, we'll see you thanks. next time. Okay, thanks, right. everybody. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye-bye.